What's his Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 hide off camera in the garbage disposal and gas production zones? As our player wakes up from our train crash, we're thrown immediately into our adventure in Chapter 3. But as we make our way through the garbage area, hit to ride down to play care, and explore the generator, there's actually a lot going on behind the scenes. From objects stored out of bounds, to tricks of the camera to make you think you're somewhere else. Also, there's this horrifying catnap stuck through the floor. Glorious! So in this video, we'll be breaking down everything that takes place in this chapter's introduction. So, I hope you enjoy. As always, I'm going to hit you really quick with a brief recap so everyone is on the same page. We start off by getting thrown down to the trash compactor by Catnap. We come out to make our way across lots of pistons to eventually enter some vents. It isn't long after this that we meet a new phone friend named Gregory, uh, I mean Ollie, who guides us through our adventure. We emerge and see the train crash from Chapter 2, and then have to power up the turnstiles to enter Elliot's Express. This rail car takes us on a whimsical adventure down to the depressing play care. But don't look too excited, we'll be collecting batteries for the next four hours. The first thing we need to do is enter the red smoke generator area to power it up. And once inside, we'll find a new nifty grab pack 2.0. With our new hand, we have the ability to jump, and this will take us through the remainder of this area's puzzles before we enter the home sweet home orphanage itself. So let's start this video off with a zoom out of this entire area. So this is the trash compactor section, and as you can see, it's packaged up pretty nicely. And this area is actually pretty intricate with all the different pipes and moving parts going through it. It's pretty cool to look at. Now, while zooming out and checking this area out, I found a duck head that was slowly falling out of bounds. Now, I'm not sure why this is here, but if we go beneath the map, you'll see this duck head, and this has like low gravity applied to it. So it falls extremely slowly, but it does fall and it does not stop. We can see these same duck heads later on in the game, but I'm not sure why this one's here. Now, going back up top, let's talk about Catnap and how they toss you down this garbage chute. So in first person, we can see those front legs as we get dragged to this hole. But from a different perspective, we can see that the front legs are the only thing that's animated. This lanky monster barely fits in this room, and the back legs actually drag on the ground as the cat moves. We can watch Catnap open up this top door and throw us in, and as we're falling, we rotate backwards to see Catnap. Now, what's interesting is this tunnel that we're thrown in actually is not the same chute that goes into the garbage disposal area. It's all a trick of the camera. So, as we fall down this giant, giant pipe, we actually get warped over to the trash compactor once we reach the bottom. Now, if we were to take the camera and go down this pipe, you'll see that once we exit, we're in the great beyond. There's nothing at all out here, and it is just the void. So once we reach this end, we get warped over to the actual compactor area and then fall out of that chute instead. Now back up top, we can see Catnap stretch their neck and move off to the side before unloading. But they don't actually unload yet. Their model gets moved across the room and stuck in the floor. So we can see their tail sticking straight up with their back legs, and beneath the floor is the rest of their body. Glorious! They then vanish soon after. So at this point, we can take the camera and fly around and see all the building exterior at this point and see how everything's contained. There's pipes and other various fixtures on the roof, and we can see just how far ahead things are loaded. Even at this point, the crashed train is still here. This train looks totally messed up. So we'll come back to this Chapter 2 train in just a bit, but it's really neat seeing everything from out here. So back in the trash area up top, there is this smashed in door where it's kind of blown off as hinges and it's blocking this hallway. And if you look down this hallway, you can see a backpack. So of course I'm curious and I want to see what's down this hallway. So I take the camera, move down the hallway and to the left is a sealed wall. So this hallway is just a dead end. Then we come across these giant pistons that we need to jump across. And I reloaded this section probably like six times just to get the next shots. So upon crossing this giant gap, we can see Catnap up ahead climbing into the vents. Now normally Catnap disappears by the time we get over here, but let's take a look at this in slow motion. So as Catnap gets up into the vent, they start to weirdly contort once they're out of view. At this point, the animators don't have to worry about the player seeing it, so Catnap's legs will actually go behind their body. So they continue to climb up this vent, and then all the hair on Catnap's body just unloads. And so we have this purple naked cat that's just sitting up here, and their head is just clipping through the moving fan, and then all of a sudden, Catnap unloads. Now, rewinding time, we can actually see the moment that Catnap appears as well. So once we jump from this final piston and land on this metal catwalk, the second we touch it, we can see Catnap loads in in the background, and then proceeds to climb up the vent. Now the vents have several sections that turn away from where we are supposed to go. And if we hop across the hole, we can see they all turn out of sight. 
So if we check these out, it will reveal that all of them just come to an abrupt end. They sort of just lead off to nowhere in the great beyond, and the same can be said about the vents down below as we fall down into them. Now once we leave these vents, this next room is the room that Catnap originally threw us down into the garbage. And there's a few things to cover. For one, I want to see if I could go down the chute again to trigger the warp to the trash compactor. But I was having trouble clipping into the garbage chute. And when I finally did make it, I just fell straight out of the level and kept falling forever. Whoops. So that's a bust. There's a bathroom we can't get into here, so I figured I'd show that off too. As you can see, it's covered in blood. It says the hour of joy on the mirror and the stall area is unfinished. There is no toilet or anything because the player can't actually see into this room from this perspective. So we move on. There's an elevator we can see right over here, but beyond the doors, no elevator actually exists. So while zooming out, I did notice a battery pack stored on top of this roof. And this is the same battery pack that is eventually used once we pick up the phone and Ollie summons this battery into the room. And once it appears, we can now check the battery on top of the roof and see that it's now gone. So this of course gave me an idea. What if we skipped grabbing the phone by stealing this battery on the roof, putting it in the door, and then proceeding without picking up that phone? So I grabbed the battery early before answering the phone and accidentally shrunk it in the process. This allows us to open the door while the phone is still ringing, but by doing so, Ollie still talks to us regardless even though the phone is still ringing on the wall. So we're back at the train. And if we take a look around the train, we can really appreciate the detail put into this crash. It's all bent up, even in areas where the player normally wouldn't be able to see. And overall, it's really well done. Ironically, even if we didn't crash the train in Chapter 2, we would have had a head-on collision just 100 feet ahead as the entire tunnel is collapsed. Just beyond this rubble, we can see the train tunnel just goes on for a bit more before coming to an end, and there is no track. Next up we have Elliot's ride into Playcare, and on this journey we pass through a massive cave environment. Trying to ride on top of this carriage is a bit problematic, but my main goal with all of this was to see what areas of the map were explorable. So the main tunnel down can't be walked on, but once you get to the cave system, all the walls have collision. I don't know why they gave them collision, perhaps because the assets are reused elsewhere, but most of the ground can be explored. Some of the rocks have low res textures and others have full scale. I end up getting trapped in this first section though and have to reload. But before doing so, let's fly around. Up above, some of these stalactites are just flooding off the roof of the cave. The player would never see this due to the lighting and the roof of their cable car though. There's lots of cavern pieces just floating out in the void too, and most of them are massive. If we try to jump out of the carriage right before the dome, we can see that the developers added a death plane here, as we just kind of turn to the side and kill over. Jumping out of the entrance tunnel to the play care also results in death. We just kind of fall through stuff and then warp back to the start again. Play care itself is kind of neat though, because although this dome looks small from far away, it hides the entire hub world inside. It's just tiny compared to the massive caverns around it. We can fly around and check out all the various buildings and areas we can't reach within the dome though, like the bell on the school or the upper deck on the house. What's kind of funny to me is one time I decided to get here before my cable car did, and that's when I looked up and saw something strange. There was a red box floating above the cable car, and that's when I took a closer look and realized it was a VCR. This VCR moved with the ride, and from what I can tell, it's what the developers used to project the voiceover for the ride. Kinda goofy, but effective since the player can't look up until they get off the ride. Once inside the center area, we can watch the key come down the pipe as it just sort of clips to the metal bar it sits on. I think messing with the game speed threw out the physics for the key, but here it is. Now we have the gas production zone, and as we walk through this door and go off to the left, we'll hit a loading zone. And the small section we see here loads into this massive area that now takes over our screen. As we fly around out of bounds, we can find a few neat things too. For one, we can find an idle pose catnap just way on the void. The head of this model will always face the active camera in Unreal Engine, so catnap always knows where we are. But this purple cat isn't the only one out here, because Kissy Missy can be found way out of bounds in a T-pose as well. This model is more than likely used in the very last scene of the chapter. Beyond this, there isn't much left in this area until we eventually come back later in the game. The red liquid that kills you is only like a foot deep, which is normally a bit hard to tell. But the final neat thing would be that we could find a cable car way out of bounds as well. It is very, very far away, but is honestly probably the same one we rode in on. And with that, that brings us to the end of this section of the game. Next up, we're heading into Home Sweet Home. And I'll see all of you in the next part of Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 real soon. Cheers!